And now for the tallest man here, perhaps, Dr. Nicola Dimitri. Yep. All right. Thank you. Okay, so uh, first of all, I would like to thank the uh, organizers. I'm kind of outlier here because I'm an economist and I got interested in Bitcoin very, very recently uh, for these three main reasons that I'm listing here. Um, and I came, I submitted the paper to this conference just to see what, it, what, what, what could happen. And it did happen that the paper was accepted. Uh, so uh, if you see lots of imprecisions, uh, Etc. Etc. Uh, the blame is on the organisers, <laughs> because uh, uh, you know it's not my it's not my fault. Uh, the main lesson I'm learning here is that uh, I, I know very little uh, about Bitcoin, uh, and so I'm very pleased to be here to try to um, uh, catch up on it. So let me uh, briefly dwell on the reasons why I got interested. Uh, the first one is a typical. Uh, reason for an economist, a peer-to-peer -peer, uh, monetary uh, exchange uh, or mean of exchange is really an intriguing issue for an economist. Uh, money in economics has always been like a question mark um, uh, since ever, I would say. The second reason is that a number of activities that I, th I think I understood are taking place in the, in the Bitcoin environment and actually key, are keen to some of my uh, current and previous interests, in particular the one that I'm going to uh, discuss more in detail, uh, is the contest uh, issue uh, that is taking place in, uh, in, in, in my interpretation, and you'll tell me whether that's correct or not, in the, uh, in the um, uh, mining activity. Uh, and the third reason is that I... Uh, recently realized that a couple of papers that I wrote uh, about 10 years ago, which actually came out in uh, computer science journals rather than uh, economic journals, uh, were uh, on, a, on, a, on a, a distributed consensus problem which uh, I took a game theoretic version of, uh, which is called the coordinated attack. I'm sure everyone knows here about the coordinated attack issue. And I realized that that is a simplified version of the Byzantine general's uh, uh, problem, which, as far as I understand, and, and again, please do correct me if I'm wrong, is uh, sort of the conceptual underpinning of, uh, of, uh, the, um, of, of the Bitcoin and the blockchain story. So, um, uh, so let's go to uh, what I would like to discuss with you today. Uh, so, uh, among the activities that I found particularly interesting and intriguing is the mining activity. And the reason why I found it interesting is because I read that the energy spending on that is massive. Uh, and so, uh, uh, I asked myself a question, is it profitable to mine? Okay, so is it, is it worthwhile mining? Uh, so that's a typical uh, economic question. I couldn't ask technical questions, so I asked economic questions. So the first question is, under what condition is this profitable? Okay, if, if it is. Um, and then the other uh, point that I, that I found very interesting is the uh, issue of, uh, you know, having an environment where nobody eventually dominates. Okay, the 50% computational power that I've been reading, uh, it seems like a diffused concern in the literature. We don't want somebody to dominate the market. So the simple toy model that I'm going to discuss are, is, uh, is actually addressing these two points. Uh, is it profitable to mine? Uh, is there an in and the second point, is there an intrinsic mechanism in the mining uh, activity that will lead to a monopoly, for instance. Um, so, in trying to answer this question, uh, that's the typical attitude that we have in the economics, is to try to conceptualize first, to find like the model that could help us to 
uh, tackle the issue. And I think the model uh, that I was, um, I was kind of convinced it could actually interpret what the mining activity is, is the contest model. Okay, contests, uh, well, I, I'm here mentioning uh, the, uh, a couple of uh, textbook on contest. It's a very widespread uh, type of situation in social sciences, included, I suppose, Bitcoin. So what is a contest? Uh, uh, a contest is a very s simple, actually, uh, uh, the description is very, it's very easy to give. It's a very simple type of competition. Uh, some subjects compete for some prize. Victory is probabilistic. Okay, you don't you don't you don't win with probability one, um, and you have to spend resources to participate. Okay, so there are some fixed costs. Uh, so that's the uh, uh, where is the point oh, here? So that's the definition of a of a of a contest. So it's very easy. Uh, you could think of a contest like, a, a, that's one of my uh, fields, uh, I do auction theory as well, and do, I'm a game theorist, so, uh, well, I'm not really a theorist, but I do game theory, okay. <laughs> um, so auctions are uh, one of the uh, uh, fields and areas that I'm working on, and you, you could think of a mining activity as an all-pay auction, that's one. We all bid as miners, investing resources in trying to solve the puzzle, uh, just one wins, maybe two, uh, and all the, uh, but everyone pays because we invest resources. So that's called in the, in the jargon, all pay auction or all pay contest, okay? And so it seemed to me that, you know, the, the fundamentals of the mining activity could be summarized by this uh, two or three points. Uh, Victory is probabilistic. We all compete to find a solution, and we all spend to do that. Um, now, let's see what, how we can, that's another uh, uh, mind deviation of economists. We try to model the story, of course. Um, so uh, that's the way I conceptualized uh, the, 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 my interpretation. And then I would like to have feedback on how much I was wrong on this interpretation and uh, uh, whether the conclusions that I'm drawing from this very simple uh, story are, are actually compatible with your experience and your knowledge. Um, so let's go on. So suppose there are uh, uh, N active miners. Uh, and suppose they are all competing to solve a puzzle and the reward for the puzzle would be R bitcoins, R for reward. So the bitcoins here could be, uh, of course, the mining uh, price, but also the fees and also maybe, well, no, these two components only. But uh, it could change over time. I'm just doing the simple stuff. Let's, let's uh, discuss the problem statically and then you could introduce dynamics, etc. Uh, every miner I has to make some fixed cost investment for competing. I suppose this is hardware, okay? You have your hardware and you... Um, and I'm, gonna, I'm not going to discuss the fixed cost also because in the uh, sort of uh, profit maximizing behavior, fixed costs don't play a role. The only variable costs play a role, okay? What is the variable cost is what I call HI. Uh, I didn't invent anything. I, I borrowed it from the literature, the uh, notation. Uh, HI is the computational power, which in my interpretation is energy cost. Why is it energy cost, my interpretation? Because that's what I st strike me uh, uh, the most. I mean, how much energy cost we are spending to mine. And that's another question maybe I have for you later on. Why do we spend this much to mine? Uh, okay, so uh, assuming uh, what some other papers in the literature do assume, which makes sense to me, that uh, um, the, the, the waiting time to find a solution, a solution is exponential because it's memoryless process, okay? Uh, then, 
uh, then this is uh, the, uh, um, the 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 uh, waiting time is an exponential random variable with this parameter with d I call it difficulty indicator, which is adjusted by the protocol as I understand to have on average a registration of every ten minutes. Is it is it correct? Okay, you, you, you tell me so. Okay, so um, let's now think of this very simple specification of uh, profits and costs. So costs are specified, so I take the uh, generic minor i, and its cost function is this one, it's linear. So uh, uh, the small ci here will be uh, what we call marginal cost. So the cost of consuming an extra unit of electricity or whatever, and HI would be the amount of electricity you consumed. Um, okay, so that's your that's your cost function. Uh, normally, it's not like that. Okay, normally it's concave. Okay, so you have increasing marginal costs rather than constant marginal costs. But with this, is, I. Presume it, it wouldn't be maybe too far as an approximation from reality on the one end. On the other hand, you can have an explicit solution to the problem here that uh, with nonlinear cost functions could be more difficult. What about the profit? The profit is actually a random variable because it's something if you win and something else if you lose the race. So if you win, it would be rewards minus what you spent given that you invested this much in energy uh, consumption. And this will happen with probability given by this. Uh, wh why is this the probability of winning? Because uh, uh, your, your waiting time is going to be the shortest, and so you're going to be the winner among the competitors. Uh, with this probability, if everyone's waiting time is an exponential, it's an exponential random variable. So that's why you, you, you have that. And H, Hn is the sum of all the investments in computational power, so it's the total, where is it? Here. It's the total, and H minus I in the game theoretic uh, uh, sort of terminology and notation is everyone's investment except a minor I. Okay, and in fact, that's the complementary probability with which you're going to lose uh, the race. Okay, so uh, so you basically now have your object to st to, to to study uh, the miner's uh, behavior, which is the expected profit of a miner. Expected profit of a miner is this one, and if, as in the presentation that we saw before we assume that people here are uh, profit maximizers, they're going to be choosing HI, namely how much energy to spend in, by maximizing uh, number one. And if you do that, you come out with this expression, right? So let me recapitulate what this expression is. Um, uh, C of N is the sum of all marginal costs, okay? So and let me just uh, uh, point out a, a, a trivial thing, but it, it's useful to, to remind ourselves the interpretation of the fact that if my marginal cost is lower than yours, I am more efficient. And I have possibilities that you don't have because I spend less per unit of consumption. So basically, um, that's the optimal that's the optimal level of energy expenditure uh, for you as a miner. And the interesting thing, uh, I missed a zero here. <laughs> Sorry, the last, the last line here should have a zero. If only the pointer could help me. Here, there should be a zero, okay? So it's greater than zero. So the, the, what I want to say, here it is, maybe not. Anyway, so number two is positive. Number two is positive, namely, it is convenient to invest in mining. Um, if that bracket in the, last, in the last row is positive, because everything else is positive, R is positive, N minus one is positive, 
c to the square at the denominator is positive. So everything is positive if the square, if the square is positive. So in other words, you find it convenient to be an active miner if your marginal cost is sufficiently low, basically. What does it mean sufficiently low? That n minus 1 times your marginal cost should be lower than the total sum of the marginal costs. Okay? Um, but what I find interesting, that's the first point I would like you to re react upon, <laughs> uh, is the following. Um, um, let me go back to this. You see that the condition, the condition uh, does not depend on the revenue. The condition for you to mine does not depend on the revenue, but it only depends on the relative structure of the costs. So if there, is a mi if there are miners here, which I suppose there are, uh, is this the way you reason? The model is correct. I mean, the model could be completely wrong, but the conclusions are correct, uh, <laughs> of course. Conclusions are correct, and the conclusions say, you mine not because the revenues are high, but because you are better in mining than the others. Does it make sense to you? So I just rediscovered the wheel, <laughs> basically. Uh, uh, and then, um, no, that, that is reassuring for me, actually. That is reassuring for me. Uh, so I have this, uh, this little example here, a uh, uh, numerical example, uh, completing my statement before that I made before. If uh, you mind, if and only if your marginal cost, unit cost for energy consumption is sufficiently low. For instance, if you have three miners, uh, minor one, minor two, minor three, and suppose that their marginal costs are one, two, and three, okay? Uh, so number three, having three as marginal cost, would not satisfy this condition, so could not be an active miner. But if he were to lower uh, his marginal cost, he could be active at that point. Um, consequences. Uh, that's your expected profit when you're active. So the expected profit this time does depend on revenues, of course. It does depend on revenues. It's only your decision that it doesn't depend on, on whether to mine or not that doesn't depend on revenues. But once you decide to mine, then of course your expected profit depends on revenues. Um, that's the first thing. Second thing, uh, I have here this uh, um, last line uh, which to show very simply something which I'm not sure whether it's interesting for for you, but I put it there because I found some kind of uh, considerations in the, in the literature on um, being rewarded proportionally to your computational power. Something like that. Okay, so uh, your computation, your relative computational power is this ratio here, which in, the, in this Nash equilibrium is going to be this expression, right? And it's positive, right? However, what is the reward here? I take a, a, what, what in economics you could take uh, the productivity rate. Namely, for each Bitcoin invested in the activity, how many Bitcoins are going to be generated? Okay, so that's the interest rate, so to speak. And that's the, so what is it? Is expected profit divided by costs. So the margin divided by how much is spent. That's, that's, that's a typical. And you get this. And this is larger than that. What does it mean? It means that for active miners, the uh, productivity rate is higher than their uh, uh, proportion of computational power that they have in the, in the population. I'm not sure whether that makes any 
interest to you, but I, I just decided to add it up. Um, so that's uh, summarized by proposition two. Let me also uh, point out that if all the miners would have the same marginal cost, which could be a case, because there could be convergence, I learn from you on how to mine, you learn from me, maybe we don't know each other, but we can observe, maybe there could be a convergence over time to having similar marginal cost, especially because if you don't, and if you lag behind, you're going to be off business at some point. If this was the case, at the limit, everyone would have marginal, same marginal cost. The two expressions that I uh, said before, the expected productivity rate and uh, the uh, uh, proportion of your computational power over the total, is they become very simple expression. The expected productivity rate is 1 over n minus 1, and the proportion is 1 over n, quite intuitively, so to speak. Uh, and so that's what happened. Okay, so Mark, that's the first thing uh, I wanted to address. First question, what are the drivers that makes a miner to be active? And the drivers, according to this analysis, uh, is the cost structure, not the revenues. And it's reassuring that you say yes to me. Okay. Uh, second thing, um, that is actually drawing from a main concern that I've, I've been reading around uh, in, the, in, the, in the literature uh, <coughs> on, uh, on uh, trying to prevent some kind of dominant position in, in, the, in, the, in the story, in the Bitcoin. Um, so the question is, if this model captures what's going on, according to this model, is there any intrinsic tendency in the activity to converge to a monopoly? So that's the, 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 the very simple question that I'm addressing. So let me go on by simple examples. Um, so again, suppose we have these three guys, uh, minor one, minor two, minor three, um, with this uh, uh, marginal cost, they can all be active because they satisfy the, uh, uh, the, the, the condition for being active. However, suppose now that minor one, okay, which is the one who is the one with the lowest marginal cost, unit cost for electricity, is the lowest, he has the lowest unit cost for electricity, he finds a way, we don't care for the time being how he finds this way, but he can lower his marginal cost to a half, 0 0.5. So he goes from 3 to 0 0.5. Of course, he will probably need to spend money to do that. Whatever is the the way to reduce, suppose he can reduce. Um, if he does that, he kicks out of the market uh, uh, minus three. In other words, by lowering his cost, he produces what economists say a negative externality on minus three, because minus three with this cost structure, a half four and five could no longer be active because the total of the marginal cost would change now and the five here will no longer meet the uh, activity condition. So lowering, sorry? Setting, sorry? Oh, okay. Okay, oh, okay, I didn't know that. So they lower their marginal costs and they're kicking out these guys. Okay, I'm rediscovering the second wheel. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> but anyway, um, so uh, lowering, so that's the. Um, 
sort of statement that everyone knows here, <laughs> evidently. So if you can lower your marginal cost, you can kick out people out of uh, the mining activity. Now, suppose that this, uh, okay, so first of all, before going on, uh, but do I want to kick out somebody? I mean, is it profitable for me? He goes out, who cares, okay? Do I gain anything or could I gain anything by kicking out somebody else? If I have to spend money to lower my marginal cost, is it going to be prof profitable? So what I can only say here in this very simple uh, version of the model is that um, when we were the three of us before I was lowering my marginal cost, uh, my expected profit as minor one was R over four. After having kicked out, kicked out uh, uh, um, uh, minor three, my expected profit is going to be 64 over 91 times R, which is higher than that. So according to this simple example, it's not a general thing, of course, but it's a simple example showing that it is possible to raise your uh, expected profit. Of course, whether it's going to be profitable is a different issue because in order for you to lower the, uh, your marginal cost, you probably need to spend some money. And if this difference is going to cover the cost that you have to sustain to lower your marginal cost, then you, it might be profitable to kick out people. Okay, so I'm trying to find reasons for kicking out somebody else, not for the sake of it, not because I don't like the guy, uh, but simply because it's better for me to kick him out. Um, and so, that's the observation. There seemed to be an activity uh, in the mining activity, I'm sorry for the repetition, that could potentially take place in lowering one's marginal cost, the unit cost, and excluding others from trying to exclude others, not because we don't like them, but because our expected profits go up or may potentially go up. And so if this is the case, where are we going to end up? Are we going to end up in a monopoly? Because if I kick you out, I kick her out, I kick you out, am I going to be the only one eventually? Uh, no. If this is correct, again, which uh, it's a qualified no, the answer, right? Uh, I'll tell you why qualified. It's a no because uh, when you have two guys remained, you and I, this condition, which is condition for being active, is automatically satisfied because this CI is either C1 or C2. And so subtracting this minus this is always a positive stuff, okay? Because if I subtract C1, it will be C2. If I subtract C2, I will remain with C1. So no matter, so, so, <laughs> when you're left with two minors, there is no intrinsic mechanism that would uh, induce one of the two miners to try to kick the other out. So that's what I mean, there is no intrinsic mechanism leading to a monopoly, because once you are the two of you, uh, you cannot kick the other out. I mean, the other, the other one could be active anyway. No matter how low is your marginal cost, the other would be meeting the condition for being active in the expected profit sense. However, if you're left with two, one of the two, and that's the qualified part of, the, of, of my answer, one of the two will have more than 50% of the overall computational power because, you know, split it in two, typically very occasionally, perhaps, you would have 50-50, but one of the two. So, just to conclude, uh, trying to address the, answer, the, the question, is this mechanism, the mining activity, the way I interpret it, uh, 
going to naturally lead to a monopoly? No. Uh, there is a tendency to lower one's marginal cost to increase your expected profit, not simply because you want to exclude the others for the sake of it, but you want to exclude the others from activity because that's going to raise your expected profits. So there is this mechanism because you can take advantage of being a lower number of active miners in the market because that will raise your uh, expected profit. However, it doesn't lead to a monopoly because once you get with two miners, that the process is blocked, so to speak. The only way to go to a monopoly at this point, what would it be? It would be that suppose the, uh, the distribution is like 80% of computational power, now 80% very unbalanced between the two guys which, who are left at the, at, at the end. So the guy with lower, very low uh, proportional computational power may find it for different reasons, profitable to just quit and invest his money in financial assets or whatever, whatever. So for, for other reasons external to the Bitcoin environment, this guy with lower uh, computational power, if it's much lower and it's not competitive with the other guy, he may find it uh, profitable to just quit and invest, but not because he's kicked out by the other, simply because he finds it more profitable to spend his own money in something else. Okay, because it, it, you know, the alternative, the outside options are much more profitable for him. But there's, there's nothing that the other miner could do by lowering his own uh, comp uh, marginal cost that could actually force the guy to go out, even if he has only like 5% of computational power. So, um, so that's it. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, thank you. All right, great. Lots of questions. Um, we're running a little bit behind just because we got a late start because you guys are bad at getting in here. <laughs> right. I'm sorry. Hi. Uh, Not you. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, I'm Tom. Uh, I'd, I'd like to know if, if the reason uh, I'm, I'm missing some details is because uh, you omitted them on purpose. One, one specific thing is the, the uh, marginal cost is based on, on what you probably pay and what you get in return. The miner gets paid out, gets his reward in Bitcoin, but he pays his electricity in uh, dollars or whatever. So there's the conversion there. I missed but it's in the paper. It's in the paper. They okay. can confirm. <laughs> <laughs> no, by the way, it, it's correct because what I do to simplify the story is to imagine that costs and revenues are all in bitcoins. So the exchange with uh, fiat currencies has happened already and the minor reasons in, a, in terms of an homogeneous. Now, if you want to make uh, uh, the modern most sophisticated, you should introduce the exchange rate, which of course it could be a random variable because you don't know tomorrow what's going to be, and then the model could be more realistic in, in some sense. But at, at this very basic uh, um, sort of stage of, 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 of the construction, the idea is that let's understand what's going on when everything is basically certain. Uh, and then let's imagine a miner who's thinking in terms of Bitcoin or dollars. So in terms of the same currency, whatever you want to, to call Bitcoin, I think we could call it currency. But uh, so uh, he thinks in terms of the same currency, so he has already exchanged dollars in Bitcoins when he's actually computed his, his own electricity costs. Uh, that's not very realistic because the exchange rate is going to be, well, it may be realistic, but it doesn't capture what's going on, I suppose, because I think the exchange rate with the, the dollar exchange rate is going to play a major role. So expectations on future exchange rate is going to be very, very important on that. So I, I don't want to minimize the issue. I just want to simplify for the time being and then maybe later. 
I'm, I'm looking forward to a state where you, where you can say if a higher price will lead to more competing, uh, competitors in the market for mining. That yeah. would be interesting to know. A higher price, you mean higher marginal cost? Uh? No. no. Marginal cost. Lower marginal cost. Lower marginal cost due to the uh, exchange rate between Bitcoin uh, huh. being more profitable. Yeah, I'll, I'll send you an email. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Hi. <clears throat> Hi. I was wondering, uh, as you were going through the presentation, um, it seemed that as marginal costs are lowered, then everything, you know, uh, basically there is an intrinsic force to, for, for miners that lower marginal costs. Does that then basically, essentially what you're saying is that we have a built-in incentive for people to create cheaper ways of producing electricity. And therefore, Bitcoin mining could actually be a net good for humanity because it incentivizes <laughs> miners to develop fusion power, solar panels in space, etc. It's cheaper ways of lowering their marginal cost. It, it's, it's a nice way to, to look at that. <laughs> <laughs> I have a question about um, what if marginal costs were near zero, like people had subsidized electricity, how would that impact the model? Well, the, one, the best guy here is the one with the lowest. So the lower, the higher your expected profit. If they all converge to zero, I don't know what happens. You know, you just, you just compute. <laughs> so... Um, you just compute. Uh, the expressions, probably you have some zeros at denominators you have to take care of. So, uh, okay, so that's. <laughs> yep. Okay, let's Please. keep it moving. We have a few more questions. Yeah, go ahead. You, got um, it. you said the relation of cost is not related to the profit, but I think that's only valid for two weeks. Then difficulty will change. And uh, so you only maybe have to include that in a more detailed model. Because when you reduce your costs, you will uh, probably use more hashing power if you consume the same energy. And then you will increase the overall hash rate, and this will uh, lead to lower profits. Um, I'm not sure I fully understand what you're saying, but mm -hmm. not because of you, but because of me. <laughs> <laughs> that, that might... uh, but uh, uh, what I said, if I got at least part of your question correctly, what I said is that the decision to mine is independent of revenues, not on costs. Only the co where are you asking this? No, I said the revenue changes every two weeks. The re yeah, yeah, the revenue change, but I'm just sort of uh, stylizing the story in a like one shot. And then tomorrow the R could be different. But in, in, in that particular microcosm, micro, uh, act, you know, uh, you would reason like this, as if you have a, an R, I think, which could be fees plus uh, reward from uh, solving the stuff. And then you have your cost, and then you have to decide how much to engage in electricity expenditure. Hey, I'm just going to take a real quick poll. Is everyone good for running a little bit late for the questions? Is everyone good with that? Yeah. All right. No? <laughs> okay, so um, first of all, thank you for your talk. I it was very interesting to see that there is this non-relation between the um, revenue and the, like what like the decisions of the miners. So I was wondering. I mean, you saw you you, you showed that the duopoly has this kind of like relations between the cost structure. And there's no reason to like move from like duop from a du from a duopoly to like a monopoly because like it doesn't make sense for the miner. So I wonder about like three three parties or four parties and five parties it looks like there is a like a landscape basically for the for the like um, marginal cost structure and uh, I think it would be very very interesting to see you know like how that land landscape looks like like where are the corner cases when will it fall apart um, I think that's a very very like interesting um, kind of like landscape to, to look at but not now yeah. <laughs> Later. All right, so <laughs> no, but it's a, sorry. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a very interesting story. Okay, and what this you, just means a little less time for lunch, but I think we got but, plenty of time. Um, I wanted it to be simple to start with, because if I cannot understand this, I have no hope to understand more complicated stuff. Hey. Um, 
would you say the mining game would be somehow changed if uh, miners started to uh, take transactions directly from the users instead of users broadcasting this to all the miners? These are one of the things that I haven't that I have no answer now because I I don't control all your technical details on timing or registration, who's mining what. Uh, so I, I cannot answer your question now because I hope to learn through Peter. <laughs> uh, <laughs> hi, more. very interesting. Just a, a something. Num a number of oh, questions sorry. that I have to make to fully, at least in my view, to fully understand what's going on. Because the more I ask, the more I realize how much I didn't know insofar as technical details are concerned, which have economic bearings. So if I don't understand at least the conceptualization of those technicalities, I cannot think in, in economic terms because if you do it earlier than me, that's very important from an economic point of view. Uh, if you do one action before what I do in a game theoretic, for instance, framework, it's very important because you move first, I move second. And so the strategies could be, could be different. So it's, it, I, I need to understand, I need to have a much better understanding of a number of technicalities that are escaping to me. That's why I want it to be simple. <laughs> Hi, just uh, to add something more to the puzzle, uh, you should consider that uh, botnet mining, which has a marginal cost of almost zero, is now pushed out of the market in Bitcoin and they moved to coins who are still mineable with their CPU. So, that's something you said the marginal cost drops so you push out the others but actually the, the ones with the zero mar uh, marginal cost well, that's is very pushed interesting out of why the were they pushed out uh, because the they they can have a bigger hash rate uh, a, a percentual the, the percent they get on a small cpu mineable coin is, is bigger so they are pushed out well they left maybe so it's they also left. something to add it maybe was their to your choice model. yes it was the outside option that they had but, but they have zero marginal yeah, I, I, I see your point, but of course, it's implicit in the story that whenever you want to stop mining, you know, you're free to do it. Uh, I, I, was just, uh, I was just imagining that somebody may be forced to exit, but you're always free to go, of course, even if you have the lowest margin cost. Uh, but that's interesting because even the best guy there found it profitable to exit. And so the question is, why are the others remaining? <laughs> Go ahead. Um, if I understand this slide correctly, you're stating that if only two miners remain, like a duopolistic situation, it's always profitable, or there's always an incentive for both of them to keep mining. However, I can't help but think that isn't true, because uh, the cost for a miner is more or less a static fixed constant. And his profits largely depend on uh, also the, the cost for the other miner. So if the other miner manages to reduce and reduce his cost further, at some point, even for two miners, for the second one, it will become unprofitable. And there's an even bigger aspect to that, because this has to do with, uh, with the technicality of Bitcoin mining. If only two miners remain, and one of them has, for example, 51%, and the other has 49%, Effectively, what will happen is the first one will not mine 51% of the blocks, but 100% of the blocks. He's always be able to keep producing the longest chain. So at some point, if two miners remain, it's always um, profitable for the second one to leave. That's interesting. Yeah. It's not true. <laughs> <laughs> if, you own, if you own the network, there's no incentive for anyone to buy the coins. But why is it enough one additional percentage of advantage uh, with respect to, to your competitor to mine everything. Because he can ignore the other guys. Yeah. He can yeah. just say, you know what, what do you produce? These are one of the mysteries that okay. I still have to you know what? disclose. <laughs> <laughs> this sounds like this could go on for quite a while. I, I, wonder, I wonder if you guys, maybe, maybe you can talk to people yeah. after okay. this. Thank I, I think it's fascinating, but I know we are really running behind. So. Um, Thank you very much. <laughs>